Hello everyone, ba welcome back to the channel. This is a quick video I wanted, well, it's not going to be very quick actually, but it's a video I wanted to make. Um, <laughs> I was playing with AGameX yesterday, early in the morning, as you can see by the timestamp right here, uh, testing out the testing out the mod that he's working on. We had some really fun games, I just wanted to cast them real quick. Um, and also this gives me a bit of a chance to talk about uh, talk about the mod and like how the development is going, what kinds of things have changed. It's really turning out very well. Um, I'm quite pleased with it myself. I mean, starting this is this is the first game that we played on Torrent Crater. Agamex is actually playing random during this whole series, but that's because he wanted to test the mod. He wanted to see how various factions played out. So he told me um, every time the game started what faction he was playing. Just kind of boring, isn't it? I mean, like, isn't like part of the idea of playing random? You know, they don't even know what you are until they get to your base, right? It's like so cool. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Um, first map here is going to be Torrent Crater. I'm spawning down here in the south, Galaxian as always, what else would I be? Iggy makes here is playing as Conef. He forgot to paint his carrier. Stupid Conef heretics. Um, <clears throat> so we can talk maybe about like some of the some of the first changes that like we're gonna experience in this. Probably the assault ship tech is less expensive, first off. Um, also base runners have had their cost changed. Uh, I can't check it right now, of course, but they cost now 300 CUs and 70 RUs, which is pretty interesting. Um, and you can see a game retired his base burner. That was one thing that he foresaw with this change is that actually retiring the base burner is a bit more of an attractive option now because it gives you more resources than it used to. I, for one, I'm always a big fan of trying to use the base runner in the early parts of the game, so I never retire it. I'm always, I'm always looking for like some way to get more uh, value out of it. I guess that's just me. But that's one thing that A game has been kind of foreseeing with like the change of cost in the base runner. But the idea was just that he didn't like the idea of people being able to spam base runners so easily, especially later on into the game. Uh, giving them an RU cost makes it much more significant, you know what I mean? First little scuffles I get to come down here with some sand skimmers. Nothing uh, conclusive, of course. We're just going to trade a little bit of damage right there. He's got two, so do I. He probably got a little bit more damage done right there. Um, I'd love to use the healing ability on my base runner if the opportunity arises. Which it might right here, I can take more damage than usual and then pop back, but A-game kind of sees this, he's going to pull back around the dune there. His carrier, he's powered up the um, cruise missile there. Uh, probably I should have dived in to kill the sand skimmer. Oh, look at that, it's only got 38 health. I feel silly for that one right there. Very good idea with him firing the cruise missile right there, but it did not quite land. Actually, another thing I should point out, the base burner heal now does actually quite a lot more than it used to. Um, so that's an interesting change there. Uh, it's been buffed. I, I can't remember exactly how much, but it's like somewhat less um, periodic, I think. Like, it's a bit more constant, and then it heals more health than it used to. Anyway, I'm going to pull back and get railgun fabrication. I feel there's not really any way that I can... Um, I feel there's not really any way that I can like do more damage up here in the front. I can't check what A game is teching to because we have the the patch installed, obviously. So I'm not able to see like use the tech viewer because you can't stack mods together at this point. I'm fairly confident I can take this fight, and sure enough, one sand skimmer is going to go down there pretty easily. Going to get good damage on a second right here. Not be able to kill it though. However, A game has got assault ships coming out on the field right now. Assault ships have had their cost increased, but the tech cost has decreased. Um, and with that assault ship right there and my complete failure to focus fire, uh, he's going to get one more sand skimmer there. So we've traded one for one, I believe. Um, he has assault ships. I'm making assault railguns. I feel this is a position that tends to favor the uh, tends to favor the player with the railguns. Um, just because your railgun is a very good counter against the soul chips, and they're also good against the sand skimmers anyway. So nothing that your opponent can really make can catch you off guard unless he goes for like an air transition. That's always something I'm a little worried about, but shouldn't be a problem here. I always kind of wonder what to do with my sand skimmers though in this early, early part right here, where like they can't be out in the middle because of the assault chips, but I still want to get field control with them. Probably I really should just make another base runner. That's something that someone commented on one of my videos. Can't remember who that was, but hey, I read it. I read them all. Um, but yeah, that would allow me to put on some more artifact pressure, I guess, but I don't know. Uh, refinery mode, not yet begun for me. I should really start on that. It's a little odd. I'm sure I'll get to it pretty soon. Uh, but I don't think A-game has got it either, so we can't check 
how long it's gonna be, but I assume it won't be too long for him. So, Salt Chip's trying to push up on this railgun and the sand skimmer. They won't be able to do this unless I make a mistake in micro here, but that's never gonna happen. I'm perfect with my micro, right? I've also got armor level 1, which I think is a good touch right there. Doesn't do as much of a difference against like assault ships, but against sand skimmers, it's a really big difference getting those armor upgrades. And you can see I'm already making a heavy railgun. Actually, my idea was if he's going to push with assault ships, you know, one heavy railgun makes it almost impossible. Now look at this guy right here. This is like excellent right there. Also, you can see he's getting his upgrades. I can't tell how many that. I think it's this one. But just having one guy right here means I can't do run bys of sand skimmers. Like, you know what I mean? That's something that I always forget to do. It seems so simple, but it really is something to something to pay attention to. But yeah, I like the idea of the heavy railgun because from this position he's able to cover all three of the entrances there, so I don't have to kind of juggle my army around quite as much. Refinery mode is about to finish for me. I've got another production cruiser on the way. No, I don't. Um, but I will soon, certainly. And I'm getting missile ship fabrication because, like I said, the only way that you can really get caught off guard this way is by, like, an air transition. I was hoping I'd be able to kill off one of those. Doesn't look like it, but that should be all right for me. But A-game is going to get onto three bases here. He's got another production cruiser on the way. There's no pressure on his side of the map. This guy is holding this off from, like, a sand skimmer push. Um, he's got his whole army up in my face. So this is, like... At this point, I kind of recognize that. I was like, well, I need to do something. I need to push in somehow. But um, I didn't quite know how to do it. If you look at the upgrades as well, he's got raiding. And then I've got... Uh, well, I can just check from here. I have armor one. So my sand skimmers are superior in like a one-on-one -on -one right now but they aren't um how do i say they aren't as fast so it's more difficult to respond to things that's why i kind of wanted to be attacking but actually at that moment you saw me pull my sand skimmers back momentarily it's because i realized like oh shoot he could just run in here he's raiding he's faster than me he didn't choose to do that in game but he would have gotten these two heavy railguns for sure and that would have been really bad for me so i was a little lucky that way um, but I come in here to see if I can do anything, but his carrier is on the main rather than on the third, which makes a lot of sense given the positioning of the armies right now. So I'm not able to do anything right there. I do catch out the sand skimmers in kind of a good way, but don't get any kills because I failed to focus fire. I suck. Um, and yeah, still no third base for me. That definitely needs to be the priority. You can see me now making the production cruiser, but I'm quite a lot later than he is. So this could get pretty rough, you know, we'll have to see. This assault ship narrowly escapes with his life. You can see I'm, I'm doing a fine job of repulsing all of his assault ship pushes here, but he still has total map control. He still is in charge of everything that's going to go on here. And now these assault ships are going to be in a really good position to dump a bunch of damage on the sand skimmers. I think that running through the pass would do a lot more damage to me than just turning around, so that's my reasoning for backing up there. What are the upgrades looking like? He's now got armor 2 on his sand skimmers. I still have only armor 1. And so suddenly the tides have completely turned in, so like, uh, in terms of upgrades. He's going to try to sandwich them with the assault ships and everything. This is not going to be good for my sand skimmers right here. And this is really where A-game starts taking control of the game. Um, as all these sand skimmers basically going to go down right here. Why are they all in groups like that? That's so funny looking. He really could have kept chasing them, but I guess he was going for these, uh, for these rail guns here. Barrage goes down, doesn't do too much. And now A-game, you can see, has teched into Siege. He's beginning to produce those. One Siege cruiser going to pop out in just a second. I now have three production cruisers, but I'm still not in three bases. And having lost all the sand skimmers there means that now it's very easy for my opponent to um, hold that off. So it's not going to be easy to get a third base for me. Um... So you can see how getting a third base later meant that my army was smaller, didn't have as many upgrades. Suddenly things are really starting to spiral out of control. And this could be this could be really bad. It doesn't look like it right now. It looks like things have basically stayed about the same, but once the siege cruiser hits the field, this is going to be kind of too much for me. I will probably fall. It's just a matter of time. Um, I am trying to match his upgrades as well, so I've got two armor and I'm getting raiding as well. Who knows when his damage upgrade is going to come out, though. He doesn't have it just yet, but I mean, he can get to it faster than me, obviously, unless I click to it right now. So I'm hoping that these, uh... I'm hoping that these assault railguns are going to be enough to, to stop the push in there. You can see me using base runner healing in case he had pushed in. That would have been really effective, but now I can't use it here, so... That's not really something that you can rely on so much. 
Um, with this production cruiser finishing, my carrier is free to move about. I'm probably going to take advantage of that in a minute, but I want to keep him on the main at the moment. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I do want to move him out immediately. Actually, no barrage yet used on the siege cruiser. I assume he's trying to figure out where I am first, which would explain the movement of this uh, assault ship right here. Barrages on the eco are obviously like not bad, but you can do better, you know what I mean? That's what he's looking for right here. He's looking for a good place to barrage into to do some serious damage to me. Barrage is going to come down right on top of this poor sand skimmer right here. <laughs> I'm going to see him back away, but you can see the damage that it did to the sand skimmers. But if I can put a missile barrage on him right now... Oh dear. <laughs> Look at the damage right there. If only I had two missile ships, you know, like every single one of the sand skimmers would have died there. Um, that's the power of missile ships right there, man. Those things are like my favorite units. However, A-game knows he has control of the field right here, so, you know, might as well start carting away some artifacts. And he's actually got two in his hands right now. Me, at this point, I was really feeling like I had nothing to deal with these siege cruises, and I was just kind of hoping he wouldn't push in. In reality, I've, you know, I've got heavy railguns here. I mean, it's not so bad, but it would still be really difficult to hold off against them. And still held off at this third base. So, still excellent play by A-game. Gonna get the artifacts out, even up the scoreline in that regard. And look at the position, look how he uses this dune here. He knows he can hold off here because there's no way I can really push on that front. Siege Cruiser is an excellent response to the armored units, so they're not going to be able to push in particularly well. I use the base burner healing here to run back and like do extra uh, more damage to my opponent while I run. And I think that was actually very successful, but I think he still has the numbers here. The Siege Cruiser is going to bully these assault ships quite nicely. And actually, he really could push in here. You can tell he's got a lot more sandstorms, like 21 to 8. Um, I guess he was afraid of something, though. He did not push in just then. My carrier here is going to try to hold off these assault ships, but it's starting to feel like just everything's coming in from every side. We are being overrun! <laughs> I see an opportunity to take out some uh, assault ships from my opponent right here, but suddenly there's a whole bunch of sandstormers on top of my rail guns. Oh, and look, I didn't even kill him. Oh, how tragic. Base runner healing will not save me here. And I mean, really, I, I think my sand screamers ran up there to try to stop the extraction, but that's never going to work, right? Really, A-game could just push in right now. I, I'm pretty sure that the reason he's not doing this, although he is kind of still poking me, so he's still keeping the pressure up, but I'm pretty sure the reason he hasn't just pushed in and finished me off is because he knows he'll win with time anyway. He doesn't, doesn't need to do anything that could potentially um, be risky to him, and there's nothing he's going to lose by waiting, so he might as well, you know what I mean? And look at this, like, one assault ship sneaking around the back lines, too, you know, it's just, like, masterful play right here. I think I said to him after the game, I was, like, once again showing that A-game inks can do anything. Because, <laughs> um, <laughs> of course, he's not really a kind of player, is he? But you, you can see from this that he clearly knows how to do it. If only I had a barrage on this missile ship, that would be nice here. But this assault ship should hold off the attack quite nicely. This one unfortunately not going to get anything done because it does get sniped off by a heavy railgun before it can take any salvager kills, but it was still a valiant attempt. And I think my unit composition is good to deal with it, there's just not enough. There can never be enough because he can he can outproduce me, he can, um, well he's A-game so he can outmicro me, let's be honest. Um, and actually now getting the artifacts too, it's really difficult to see what my advantage is in this game. And these assault railguns trying to target the wrong unit as well is a little bit unfortunate. So I'm thinking, okay, last ditch effort, maybe I can use my carrier to try to push the push the pressure off of like this area. And then maybe I can um, maybe I can get something done that way. You can see a missile barrage from the missile ship is gonna do well getting rid of those assault ships right there. Um, another barrage comes down from that siege cruiser. Still not getting any kills, but all my units are like perpetually damaged, I'm sure you can see. And with two siege cruisers right here... Three? Where's the third one? Oh yeah, it's, it's right there. Look at this, like he had an assault ship earlier, now he's got a siege cruiser just ramping up like the... the backstab prevention, you know what I mean? I've noticed that about Aegean, he's, he's very cautious about that kind of thing. It, yeah, it usually works out very well for him. Right, but two siege cruisers here is definitely enough to hold the carrier off. It's not going to be able to um, 
push in here very well. So I've cleared up this area finally, but it's not going to last for a long time. I do have assault ships now, and I, you noticed I teched that perhaps. I think that was a very prudent choice right there because it means... Oh, and he's making interceptors, I can tell. you They're on top of each other, but I can tell it's an interceptor. Maybe because I played the game and I remember what he made. Anyway, um, having assault ships right here means that I don't need to have my sandstorms back at home always to protect against things. And this is like the most effective base runner heal I've used in my life, so that's always nice. Um, and it's been buffed too in this patch, so you know. But yeah, you can see that um, these sand skimmers here are going to take pretty pretty big losses when they push in here. They're actually still probably going to be able to get through just because there's not enough numbers here. But I was thinking, well now that my sand skimmers are a bit free, I can run up there. But no, that's a siege cruiser, so excellent, excellent choice there. And now he's starting to mobilize his carrier here. Adding to this whole theme of like, I'm under siege, it's going to be his carrier using its missiles, that's kind of what they do. And they do tons of damage against carriers. Um, I think they're, they're planning on changing in the patch so that it doesn't do extra damage against carriers, which it currently does actually extra. Um, but that hasn't been implemented just yet, but you can see the damage that's been done to this carrier already. And carriers in the balance patch have less health, so it's, it's much easier to kill them off. Even though this is normally, like, this is not really gonna turn out well for me, I figure I need to stop one of these extractions at least. So you see I move in here with an assault railgun with the sand skimmers, trying to see if there's an opening where I can kill one of the uh, artifacts before it can extract. I will probably get this one, but it's looking... I mean, I'm with the smoke there, those Con F base runners and their smoke keeps them alive much longer. And there's a whole lot of sand skimmers here, so it's questionable if I'm ever gonna be able to do that. An interceptor launches for A-game, but that's not gonna last very long. Fortunately, I had already invested in anti-air, and actually he knew that, so... Oh wow, I got the artifact. See, I don't really know how I got that artifact, but uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this carrier was looking a bit exposed to me. I thought perhaps I can get some good damage on it and at least force it to leave. Um, but it's going to be one more artifact until I lose. And it's really not clear what I'm going to do about this. My beginning game base runner is still alive, which I think is awesome. Um, so I can, like, grab an artifact to stop him from being able to grab it, but that's really just going to buy time. The siege cruiser is coming into backstab. When siege cruisers are backstabbing, you have trouble, you know what I mean? Uh, my railguns here are just going to sacrifice themselves to try and get this last siege cruiser. I just felt like it was necessary. Um, but it's, it's not enough. You can see I'm making assault ships. Uh, thinking, okay, well, <laughs> a whole bunch of railguns in my face here. All I can do is try to make assault ships to try to counter this. Running in through the middle with my carrier, I don't really know what the idea with this was, but, you know, I'm sure it'll work out well. <laughs> Producing assault ships from all of these um, production cruisers to try and buy some time against these sand skimmers, but I'm just never going to be able to make enough uh, siege cruisers coming in from this side. There's no answer to that just yet on the field. My carrier might even just die to the Conf carrier right here, honestly. I think that's probably how this is going to end, but you can see it's over on this front anyway. Because those missiles, like... They are evil, you know? I mean, just look at, like, the damage that can be put on a carrier like this. And him having a siege cruiser in the back line here, he can obviously just use that against me. You can say I've got an interceptor now, by the way, but... The carrier slides into the trench, <laughs> out of control. And that is going to be the game. It was over pretty much at the time where I lost all my sand skimmers there. And pretty much that was caused by the fact that I didn't have a third production cruiser. But you can see how long I can drag it out. I mean, you never know. Players make mistakes sometimes. But we wouldn't really expect that from A-game inks, would we? We'll move on to the next map from the series. But that was very well played from him. Decently well played from me. But I could obviously do better in some ways. Let us see what the next map brings. Oh yeah, and you can look at the economy. Look at the difference there. Again, like I was saying about the, um, what's it called? About the uh, third base there making a big difference. So the next map was the Boneyard here. Once again, A game playing random. This time he rolled Soban. And he actually was very happy about this because it's something that he wants to be testing. Most of the changes in the patch so far have focused on Coalition and Gaussian, but now they're, they're wanting to start addressing, you know, Con F and Soban and stuff like that. So, how prudent, yeah, that he's, um, he's rolled Con F first and Soban second, right? The Boneyard's a very interesting map. I think of this one as, um, 
a bit more of an aggressive map, but the Sylvan are much more of a defensive faction. So that kind of balances itself out there. Um, this is a map where the middle is very complicated, you know what I mean? So it's, it's very difficult to just have like an obvious um, like an obvious attack path, you know. You always have to be uh, always have to be finding creative ways to engage your opponent here. Once again, we can't check the um, the tech for a game, but he's going to go for a support cruiser first build. This is usually actually somewhat punishable against coalition, although it's difficult. But against Soban, there's really almost no way you can punish it because of these dudes, the armed logistics modules. The carrier doesn't really do anything. Um, that's the that's the moral of the story with Soban, and we're hoping to change this with the patch too, so that they're actually like you know useful for something. Oh, that's interesting. Like the the headlights of the carrier are visible in the sensors manager. That's odd. Anyway, um, <laughs> but the armed logistics modules are very useful. Oh yeah, look, even the one from the support cruiser too. That's so weird. Point is, uh, these things slow units down. They they like stun them uh, for like a short amount of time, which means it's very hard to close the distance. And you know, sand skimmers need to close the distance if they're going to do damage to um, whatever you call it, da do damage to LAVs. A game's just now beginning to make his first LAVs, and I see his carriers here, so I think okay, it's got to be support cruiser first build. I'll run up here, see what I can do. But getting stunned by the um, ALM this is going to mean that I can't really move in particularly well. And you can see he deploys another one right here just to solidify the defense. So I have to run back. And at this point I was thinking, well, I can I can convert this build into sort of like a, an aggressive feint. I'll actually fall back with the production cruiser, get refinery mode early, get these two lazy boys harvesting, and maybe I can transition this into an economic build. So I'm saving up to refinery mode right now. Kind of. I'm making a salvager apparently. I have six sand skimmers. I can try to do some... <laughs> six sand skimmers. I can try to do something with them in the early game, maybe like harass this salvager right here. Um, but it'll be difficult. Uh, it's interesting, normally like the defense is on the side that the carrier is, right? If it's a coalition player and he's here, then you want to attack his main. This is where he's undefended. But in this case it's like the exact opposite, you know? It's, it's very interesting that way. He's got AAVs already and I see that, so I think, okay, Sandskirm is not really going to be able to do anything right now, but I can tech to rail guns quick. Um, so you'll see me cook up to that. And I can actually make heavies because I know that my uh, sand skimmer count, excuse me, is higher than his LAV count, so I don't need to be worried at all about um, what his LAVs can do, really. I can make heavy railguns already, and I can probably um, come out okay in this regard. Gonna get an artifact extraction, that's always nice. And my other thought was, if I've got railguns that are stopping his AAVs from advancing, probably I want my carrier here instead of here. So after refinery mode comes out, you'll see me move my carrier back in this direction. And I'm always also um, just trying to see if there's any value I can get out of my sand skimmers, but knowing that there's still armed logistics modules here and there's an AAV right there, I really feel if I poke in, I'm going to lose someone, so I back away out of that one. Railgun fabrication finishes in about six seconds. And by the way, I don't know why, but assault railguns actually, well, I, mean, I do sort of understand the reason, but assault railguns take longer to make than heavy railguns, so if you're in this kind of a scenario, sometimes you actually want to make heavies instead of assault railguns so that you can defend better. It sounds really kind of backwards because we, I don't know, we don't usually think of like uh, railgun openings that way, but that's how it is. So there's one heavy railgun here popping into existence kind of. The AV gets repulsed by the carrier, he sees that there. He would like to attack on the main now, but it's going to be difficult to reposition, obviously. These two AVs might be tasked down there, though you can see one of them's kind of moving, changing position there. If you look at the tech for A game, he's gone into railguns already. And uh, my my strength here as Galazine is that I can get onto a third base before he can, but you can see by the movement of this carry that I'm not doing this. This was probably my big mistake in this game. If I would move out here and start a third base right now, when I still have field control because I've got these heavy railguns, I would probably be in a good position, but uh, I, didn't, I didn't do that, <laughs> as you can tell. Um, he's going to see heavy railguns. He knows he can't push in, so he smokes up, backs away. Um, but yeah, moving here kind of gets a bit more control of this area of the field, but moving here gets me, you know, money. Money is good, my friends. 
I'm also going for a railgun assault ship build here, so I don't have to worry about LAVs quite so much. Um, but, yeah, you know, I think that's actually a fine choice. I was going to critique that a little bit, but I guess it's really not, not a problem. But at this point, I scout that he's got railguns of his own. They're going to try to shoot at my um, assault railgun right here. But it will get behind the dune, so it'll be okay. I pick up this artifact with the base runner too. Um, so that's always that's always nice. But you see he's got one AAV on the extraction zone. This is just such an A-game angst thing to do. Really it should be an everyone thing to do because we should all follow this example, but for some reason we don't really think of this, for, or at least I don't. But that's gonna like single-handedly stop an extraction, just one, one unit, you know? Very insignificant change to the force of his army. And you can see I'm starting to do that thing that I was talking about earlier, getting my carrier in position here, but now that he's got railguns it's a bit too late for that. If I had had a third base earlier, this would this would work, but it's really not going to in this case. And in this case, interestingly, a production cruiser would be better, wouldn't it? Because it can be like right here, and then the railguns can't actually hit it. Also, look at A game's use of mark target there. I think that's really cool. Mark target, of course, has 100% accuracy, um, and it increases the accuracy of other units when they attack that. And so, oh yeah, look at the little backstab by the AAV right there. And so that means that if your uh, railguns are going to attack uh, salvagers, you can turn on mark target and they'll all have extra accuracy. Just, just on one of them, because obviously mark target doesn't do any damage. But Technically it does one damage per shot, but that's not much. <laughs> I think the reason is because DOK's engine would cause them to not actually deliver any effect if they did zero damage. But yeah, I just think that's really cool. I think it's worth pointing out. But his harassment is so effective right here. Um, and this AEV, after doing damage to the main, backs up, and now it's going to stop the extraction, you know, I mean, it's just like... He's perfect. Um, you, you couldn't see it, but I like shook my hands in front of my face there. <laughs> yeah, you can see he's got superior upgrades. Of, well, maybe... Yeah, I think he's got superior upgrades here. But he takes out my railguns quite easily. The assault railguns are not really going to have much of a place in this fight right here. And I'm just, I'm so cramped, you know what I mean? Honestly, this game kind of feels like it's over already. Um, it's a little unfortunate for me. <laughs> and despite having teched into assault ships, I haven't been able to build a single one, actually. Um, it just, it hasn't worked out that way. And so instead I've teched into interceptors, I'm thinking maybe I can pick off a couple of railguns here, but... It's gonna be very difficult. My assault railguns find an excellent position right here to do damage, and A-game kind of forgets to target them there. Um, and so that's pretty fortunate, I managed to take out the AAVs. If I had a superior uh, sand skimmer number at the moment, I would be able to get these railguns. And you heard the artifact going off in the background, it did not score. But I don't have the superior strikecraft number, so I'm going to be pushed back in that regard as well. And now there's another counterattack looking back on this eco right here. It's just relentless, you know, it never ends. This is what it's like to play against A-game inks, my friends. Don't even, don't even try it. And Interceptors get a launch here, but there's LAVs in the area. Interceptors have been buffed with a bit more armor, um, which means that it's more difficult for LAVs to kill them off. I think, honestly, like in vanilla, that Interceptor would have died right there, which is just ridiculous. Like, they have no health at all. Um, but in this case, like, even though that makes almost no difference against missile batteries, it makes a big difference against um, LAVs. So the Interceptor lives. It's going to be able to do things for me later on. So I'm moving out with my carrier again, and the thought here is I need to get something done. Uh, I need to stop the siege here because it's never going to go in my way. I actually do clear out quite a couple of strike craft right here, but there's still a armored assault in the field, so I'm not going to be able to. And look at the mark target again being used on the sand skimmers there. It's, it's beautiful, so long play here. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to be able to push in on those railguns there as long as that AAV is in the field. I'm just going to dock this uh, this interceptor because again, I feel like I can't stay in the area because of these LAVs. I've done actually good damage to the railguns, and slowly I'm going to be able to pick these things off if they keep taking damage like this, but very slowly, <laughs> so... In fact, where's the really damaged one? Oh wow, look at that! He's taking the, the railgun with 27 health and he's going to put it back and heal it up. 
good. <laughs> but again, two base against three. A game against Pozo Cow, that doesn't help either. <laughs> um, it's going to be really, really difficult if I was to get back into this game. It would have to involve him making some kind of mistake. You can see my one interceptor has prompted three missile batteries to get produced. And that was not obviously the intention, but I almost feel like I've sort of baited him a little bit here, which is kind of nice. Interceptor standing still there. You can kind of see that in the sensors manager. This is going to be the fateful, the fateful trip of the interceptor. If he goes a little bit too far and hits that missile battery, he'll certainly die. And I see it, so I'm going to dock him immediately. Not interested in that in the slightest. Getting my damage upgrades, that's good, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, more backstabbing coming in with these AAVs. And you can tell I'm really just getting picked apart. Pulled left and right, left and right, left and right. This is like what Galazine is supposed to do against Coalition. Here it is, you know, the opposite. Um, a game is not really the kind of player who goes for early game aggression, but he is the, the aggressor in almost every engagement, you know what I mean? You always, like, you feel when you're playing against A game Inks that even if you have more units, he's still in control of what's going to happen on the field. It's just, it's inexplicable, but he's so good at what he does there. Um, I almost have a window to get these railguns, but the, the LAVs are going to come flying in here with their boost. Interceptor docks as fast as it was launched. The army gets taken out on this side, and at that point I know that it's game over, and I'm going to GG out. Before that it was possible he could make some kind of egregious error or something, but you can see that like the very long, slow siege has paid off. I was trying the entire time to fight an uphill battle, literally. You can see I'm fighting up a hill there to get onto my third base and I couldn't do it. I couldn't just stay still because his economy is just getting more and more, you know, more and more bigger. Um, and so uh, he managed to take that win quite nicely. It was very, very clean from AGM8. Moving into the third game of the series. I'm feeling like, okay, I gotta do something different, obviously. Um, so this time I'm gonna go for more of a macro approach. It's gonna be on Firebase Krill. Um, and I'm thinking maybe I can do, um, maybe I can do an interceptor rush where like you get air units without them really expecting it. Maybe I can just go for assault ships or something, but I wanna go on that line and I wanna go with a refinery mode first build because A game really is not gonna push me in the early game, especially considering how much aggression I've done to him. Uh, and so even like even if he notices that I'm doing like a macro build because I'm not up in his face like I always do it It's not gonna matter. He isn't gonna be able to um, punish me for it. So That's my that's my plan going into this match here um, As for a game he's rolled coalition uh, I'm not totally sure what he's gonna go for um, But this is a very fun game right here this one on firebase krill so it's a, it's a little bit more exciting than the last ones. Like the first game was really fun to watch me try to defend, but you kind of knew the whole time I was gonna lose. The second one was just kind of like, yeah, that that didn't go very well. This third one is a lot more exciting. I'll just tell you that. So, even though I'm going for a macro build, I do get sand skimmer fabrication first because I'm worried of, about some kind of some kind of counterattack from him. Um, really, I don't think that was necessary. I probably could have gotten away with that and gotten refiner mode faster, but that is okay. Part of part of any RTS is reading your opponent. You know, if you know who they are, if you know how they play, it's a lot easier to try to um, kind of like counter strat against them. And in this case, that would have been one way that I could do it by not getting sand scammer fabrication this early because there really was no reason for it. I didn't need it. But I'm going to produce, I think, four sand scammers or something like that. LEVs are starting to come out on the field for a game eight, so he is changing things up a little bit. Um, but probably after making about four of them, he'll go for a support cruiser. I have to see, it should be on the production tab pretty soon if he is. Um, but yes. Refinery mode still not yet on the way for me, but I'm going to save up to it now. When I go refinery mode first, I don't really go refinery mode first, I guess. <laughs> I'm a little funny that way. I, I like to get a little bit of military presence on the board first, just in case. But I'm going to see these sand skimmers here. And I'm actually at fleet capacity right here, but I'm going to go for a firing mode anyway. This is a really big gamble here, but I figured it would be okay because A game Inks is not really... He's not really the player who would be that aggressive in the early game. Um, and what I really want to do here is trade, because if I lose a unit and he loses a unit, I can produce another one. But if I don't, he can produce another one and I can't, and eventually he'll actually overrun me here. He doesn't know this, 
Um, I'm kind of trying to keep this hidden as best I can by using the sand skimmers to stop him from entering my base. And if I could go for a trade, I would love to do that. Um, but that is the case here. This is this is definitely on a knife edge what I'm doing. But I've only got to hold out for about 30 more seconds. It doesn't look like I'm going to be punished for this at all. And I'm going to be rewarded with quite a large number of CUs since there's nothing I'm spending them on just yet. That'll be another production cruiser very fast. Uh, salt chip fabrication already going to be on the way. So, in this case, you can see he has not really been that aggressive. It's going to pay off for me in the end. And I will not have to worry about getting rushed at all in the beginning, so that's nice. A slip ship fabrication comes down, but I wanted to play this mostly just using sand skimmers. Look at that, he's already got an armor upgrade, so his uh, LAVs are definitely a little bit more valuable than mine right here. Well, actually quite a bit more valuable. <coughs> yeah, fleet capacity is upgraded. The first thing I think I'm going to do is go for a production cruiser. Yep, there it is. And then I'll begin making more sand skimmers. This probe by A game is pretty essential. Um, I would have been able to pull off like an air rush if it weren't for this probe, but he's going to come into the carrier and he's going to see... Nothing? No, I'm sure you can see it. Oh, it's not finished yet, right. But he is going to see Assault Ship Fabrication um, finished. He can't see it just yet because of the things haven't opened because it hasn't actually finished, but you know what I mean. And this might be a good time to talk about the probe, by the way. Its health has been increased, but the damage of base furnace has been increased. And the idea is to make the probe die a little bit less, you know, instantaneously. Yeah, like, he sees it raising, even. That's, like, that's when he gets the vision with his probe there. So he knows there's assault ships on the field. He's not going to be surprised by air, then. Um, and I knew that he had seen it as well, but I still decide to go for air. And I'm thinking maybe, maybe I can still get something good done with them. I see the little blip there, so I know his LAVs are down on this side. I'm going to pull my sand skimmers over, and they have got the armor upgrades too now. And in fact, they have got more armor upgrades than he does, so I'm able to take this fight quite nicely if it comes to it. Sand skimmer rating getting researched by me as well. Um, armor 2 looks like just finished by A-game actually, so that's a little bit unfortunate for me. He is going to be able to get out of there just fine, no problem. But I would love to be able to score this artifact, and I think using the healing ability, I should be able to do it. Um, that's obviously, uh, always lead. <laughs> that's obviously a bit of a micro-intensive maneuver there, but, but I think I can handle it. Um, and so I thought about it for a second, I said, he's extracting an artifact and his LAVs are right here, so maybe I can just go stop the artifact, actually. Um, and it looks like he kind of understood that, he starts backing away once he sees the red blip, he knew what was coming. We'll see how much damage I'm able to put down here, but with the LAVs coming and an armored assault vehicle coming as well, I should not be able to do that all uh, completely. And I believe I got onto three bases faster than he did, by the way, but I'm not totally sure about that. Anyway, we have a little bit of a scuffle going on here. Um, excellent timing of his AAV, because otherwise the, sand, uh, the LAVs wouldn't even really be able to defend the space runner. And on top of that, he's going to put a turret down, so I'm going to just run away with the LAVs. going to launch my first... Um, interceptor in an attempt to kill off that probe. And you see if there's anything I can do to stop the extraction. The interceptor is going to drop some shots down on the uh, AAV, which is good because I don't have anything else right now that can deal with the AAV. So I would have to dive a bunch of um, sand skimmers on it if it doesn't so, like, if it has enough health, that's obviously going to be bad for me. Actually, this just looks like it's going to be bad for me. The AV is going to get in here, and I don't really have anything that can do with it at the moment. Um, and he's also definitely going to extract this artifact now. So, you can see my insistence on not getting any armored assault... Uh, no, what are they called? Assault ships um, before getting interceptors. This kind of resulted in me losing some field control over here. Base runner anti-air, by the way, is increased, so I need to be careful with these interceptors. They can't stay here forever. You can see it does quite a bit of damage right there. Um, he's going to attack my soldiers on this side, but I saw that coming. I was able to pull back in time, and I have my sand skimmers in the area. The armored assault vehicle goes down. And I was thinking at this point that I could do a little bit of a chase here, but I believe this was definitely a mistake. As you can see, he's even got high ground on some of these units. Um, and we have the same number of upgrades, so there's just, there's really no way I can take this fight here. So 
so I'm definitely going to lose more than him off of this exchange, but um, not egregiously so. It still is looking okay. And really, if I had waited for like five more seconds, I would have had damage too as well, so... Oops. <laughs> what more can I say? He's producing basically just a ton of LAVs. Looks like that's what he wants to use to deal with this, which makes sense seeing as there are interceptors out on the field. Uh, my third production cruiser is going to finish pretty soon, which will free up my carrier to move. But I remember that he had put down a turret here, so I thought, well, that's something easy that I can go for with my interceptors right here. So I take out the turret, and I'll take two shots right there. Does he have support cruiser anti here? No, he does not. So I could actually go in for some salvagers right here, but I really generally feel unconfident with air units. I think that's one of my problems. One thing they do, uh, they definitely do for me right here, is that they show me that all of these LAVs are moving out to the side of the field. So I think, okay, well, I can stop that. So I'm going to move out with my LAVs there. Power Reserve 2 is on the way. I'm going to be able to move out with my carrier because the production cruiser is finishing just now. I'm feeling good about that. Uh, there's no way that these uh, LAVs are going to be able to push in and really do that much damage to me. We have equal uh, upgrades here, but I've got um, an assault ship in the area. I've got a, about the same number of sand skimmers. You can actually check. He's got seven more. I guess that's actually fairly significant, but I still think, you know, having my carrier here, I should be fine. I don't really need to worry about this. Um, and I'm also still just waiting for a time that I can extract this artifact, but it's definitely taken a while. That's one thing I like about my, my early aggressive build that I always do, is that it guarantees me basically that I'm going to get an artifact out. These sand skimmers are going to run down on this side over here, see what they can do. I see a missile battery. I have, I have very bad experiences with missile batteries, so I'm, I'm not really too keen on uh, pushing in where that is. But this also tells me the location of his missile batteries this is pretty important to know. Um, I'll be ready for them. I won't put my interceptors up on top of them. It's always dangerous when you use air because they're very expensive and they die super fast to those, uh, to those missile batteries right there. Looks like Agen picking up two more artifacts with his base runners. I'm going to want to try and stop that. So you can see me tasking my carrier to move up there. I really feel rather secure with my carrier, like nothing really bad is going to happen to it. But I see the missile batteries there and I instantly tell them to dock because I don't think they're going to make it out otherwise. One of them still dies, but these two make it out. Oh, this guy didn't dock for some reason, which is kind of odd. Um, but I get a, a nice engagement on this base printer. I take out one of the artifacts that he's carrying and I am going to be able to score another one. And my assault ships here are able to take out, or take up quite a lot of the map actually. They're pretty good for map presence for me. I'm also making heavy railguns because I anticipate that's what he's going to go for next. Rather than going for siege, that would be my other option in this case. And I'm hoping to be able to stop these base spinners, and actually they turn around. And I think that they would have made it if they hadn't, um, which could have really drastically changed this, this game here. But for whatever reason, he kind of, you know, he was worried about that. He backed away with those. So my carrier is able to take up this position. There are railguns here, which will be able to push it back eventually, but this buys me a lot of time. My soul ships here are going to experience that first, as they take some damage to them, but they put out a lot of good damage onto this missile battery right here. Now I see it with my carrier as well. He sets up two turrets with his base runners. I think that's quite wise because he's trying to just stop the, uh, the sand, uh, the sand skimmers from being able to get a run by and take out the railguns. And I saw the red blip on my radar thinking there was something pretty big here. So I was like, oh, look at the movement commands. Do you see that? He was like, <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> um, I was thinking I couldn't move my base runner because it would get killed, but it was actually only like three railguns, or one, one sand skimmer, so. I used my assault ship here to save my railguns, but they actually go down. I think that was still worth it, though, to stop the railguns from getting killed there. But it is still interesting to see just, just how fast uh, assault ships can get killed by LAVs. I see that the artifacts are moving up on this side, so I run in with my carrier. And there are four, um, four railguns here, but that's not enough to stop me. So I think I can kind of step on them. That's kind of what I call this maneuver, where you just kind of run on top of them and then just kill them with your carrier's damage output. Um, and in doing so, I'm actually going to purposefully allow those two artifacts to slide by, but instead take out the railguns, which is going to allow me to take out more more field control with my um, 
what you what you may call it with my assault ships. You can see I'm going to take a lot of carrier damage this way, but I think it'll be okay because I'm going to kill a number of rail guns here. This is a bit of a risky maneuver, but I thought I could do it in this case. My sand skimmers stay here for a little bit too long, take a lot of damage by um, turrets, but they're going to move up here see if they can stop one of these extractions at least. And I think I got two railguns out of that, um, but the biggest thing that I did was I pushed them all the way out of this area. Power Reserve 5 has come down for me, by the way. Um, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to stop either of these extractions right here. Railguns up on the high ground are going to do a really good job taking out the base runners, so that's actually good because they are very relevant units, but I'm not going to get the artifacts before they extract. And then seeing that the LAVs cut across this way, I backed my railguns up because I'm worried that he's going to push in. I don't have any assault ships here actually, which makes me feel very uncomfortable because he actually could kill like a lot of stuff back here if he knew it. Um, but I'm still just kind of banking on the fact that he doesn't. My soul chips here have just taken control of this entire side of the map, so I'm going to see if maybe I can do even more, maybe I can push in. Um, but that's not certain. We'll see how that works. And then I'm healing out my carrier, of course. As you can see, there are railguns here, so that's going to stop my uh, stop my assault ships from being able to do too much on this side of the map. They're going to back away. One AV up here is not going to cut it. I am going to be able to push this off with railguns if I want to. And seeing that his railguns were bunched up here, I fired the Gelsian Missile Barrage. Which, frankly, I still think should be removed from the game, but hey, it helps me in this case, so I can't really complain, can I? I think, I, I think I've talked about this before, but I really don't like... I don't like cruise missiles, and uh, I guess this counts as a cruise missile, you know? It's like the Gelsian Missile Barrage and stuff like that. Honestly, I feel like they should all just be removed, but... Um, that's not up to me, I can understand that. So, while well, they're still in, I'll use them. <laughs> look at that. My base runner is going to try to extract another artifact here, and that should go pretty much uncontested. Um, because he knows he needs to get control of this side of the map, so he's not going to... He's not going to worry too much about that. Remember that game that I had with um, Descara on this map? Where, like, I really should have won, but I lost, like, 200 sand skimmers to these stupid missile batteries? I think I've learned my lesson. I'm not, I'm not doing that kind of stuff anymore. <laughs> right, well I've got um, two bombers finished now. And bombers don't reveal anything on the carrier. There's no way to know that bombers have been teched up to. So this is going to be a bit of a surprise for him. I always have kind of a surprise factor in that regard. I think he would have seen them in this moment right here. But I really, I really enjoy bombers. They're fun units. One of them's going to go after a turret, as you can see here. The other one's going to go after this missile battery, but it dies already. Oh, that's nice. I've got one assault ship with my railguns here. This is a nice touch just to stop them from being vulnerable to LAVs. Still, though, I don't have the numbers advantage, and so these railguns are able to push in here. But I do have bombers, and these railguns are looking awfully bunched up, aren't they? So I'm thinking, hmm, huh. maybe there's something that can be done with this. I researched range calibration, by the way, at this point, but I never actually use it, so <laughs> I felt a little silly about that. But I'm going to use the Galaxy Missile Barrage right here. I was quite late on the bombers, as you can see, so I'm not going to be able to get too much done with him there. The Sand Skimmers are going to run in for backstab over on this side. And actually, it looks like I don't use my bombers at all in this case, so never mind, I lied. Uh, maybe I'm thinking of something else. But you saw that they docked at that point. Like, if I hadn't docked my bombers and I had instead launched them right there, I really think I could have killed, like, all of these railguns. That would have been just destructive. Um, but like I said earlier... Oh, wow, look at this. <laughs> it's like D-Day right there. Yeah, I really should not have run in there. Um, but yeah, like I was saying earlier, I'm not really very confident with my, uh... I'm not very confident with my air units. I should, I should be a little bit more willing to risk them, you know? It's really important to me that I... S oh yeah, yeah, the bombers are going to get the air units. Hey, look at this. Or the railguns, that is. But yeah, it was really important to me that I stop these artifacts, and I'm going to. And you can see the bomber is just going to dump out tons of damage on these railguns right here. I feel like all of them are going to go down. And that's going to leave A-Game's carrier rather exposed. Um, 
It's on very low health thanks to the missile barrage. All the railguns that were supporting it have been taken out. Most of my air units went down in this exchange too, but I think that was definitely worth it. And I still have one bomber that I can do a lot with. One bomber goes a long way. I'm hoping at this point that I can actually just use this push to run in and take him out entirely, but it does not look like that's going to be the case. Um, so my army stays in here, I think, for too long. He's a bit of an overcommittal right here. But still, my carrier is at completely full health. Hasn't even been touched by this. Uh, and it's got quite a lot of power in it. This is, this is like a very nasty thing you don't want to deal with. Also, if I can weed out these anti-air turret posts and the missile batteries, that's always nice. But you can see I'm going to try to give chase on the carrier here. Another missile barrage is going to come down and do more damage to him. But, you know, predictably, they're very inaccurate, so... <laughs> and I noticed, by the way, that A-game has got quite a lot of power in there, but I don't know what power is going to be researched, obviously. I think one of those missiles hit myself, actually. <laughs> That'll happen when you move forward after launching the missile barrage. But um, I think you can see what's going on just by the amount of the map that's been revealed here. I just have control of everything at this point. So I'm feeling, I'm feeling good, you know? This is good times for me. And the bomber, look at that. Bombers are actually, like, um, notoriously bad at taking out strike craft, but if, if you get, like, the right movement where they're moving down and you're moving up, you can get a really nice shot on them there, so... Especially with uh, tactical bombers, like precision bombers target one unit, hence precision, right? It makes sense. Tactical bombers drop like a, a charge that like goes off in a chain reaction, so if they hit like the LAVs like that, all of them would have died there, which is crazy, but... Unfortunately, tactical bombers not really used very much by coalition players because... I mean, they're pretty bad, honestly, but... <laughs> That's another thing that we're addressing in the patch, but um, it's kind of hard to show that from this. But yeah, I'm starting to try to extract artifacts here. Obviously, if you've got field control, that's something that you can do. And I think I've got quite a large number of railguns here. I think I should be fine to take this railgun fight. Especially with my carrier here having, I believe, more um, you know, attack potential than my opponent. Also, a base burner heal is going to come out here and heal up my railguns while they're in the fight. And A-game's railgun count really goes down quite a lot. I'm able to come in here, um, do a lot of damage with these LAVs. And this is starting to feel almost like an inverse of game two, which... Or game one, I guess. I don't know. They're, they're both different because A-game wasn't losing in the beginning, but... As you can see, like, when I beat A-game, it takes, like, a lot of effort and a lot of time. When he beats me, it's just like, oh yeah, he won, you know? <laughs> Still, though, this felt very good. I, I was very happy with this, um, because it was, like... A just reward, I suppose, for, you know, enduring, like, those first two losses there. And at this point, even if A-game had a cruise missile and took out all these railguns, I think I would still win. Um, I have my sand skimmers in the back line doing tons of damage. I've got my carrier all powered up, ready to go. Uh, even if I don't get a carrier kill right here, I should probably be able to just win by artifacts. As you can see, a third one gets scored right there. Powering up the healing, even though I haven't taken any damage, like you do. The bomber's even being launched here to take out the missile battery, but I underestimated how much health it had. Normally bombers can take out missile batteries in one shot, but he, um, he had gotten his upgrades already, so I did not kill it, which I was a little annoyed about. Look at this, 33 health. Tilts me. But yeah, that was pretty much game, and so I started chatting in here and then almost like, almost allowed him to come back somewhat, because as you can see, he's still producing units here. Sounds kind of funny, but... Uh, not enough for him to actually win this, so... Battle cruisers! <laughs> That'll do it. All of these railguns are gonna go down here. But his carrier has still taken so much damage that if I just click on it, I should win the game at this point. And even if it just barely gets out of range of the carrier, I can just launch the bomber and then drop one bomb on it and that'll be the end, so... So that's the game. I thought it was a nice clean win. I could obviously have played a bit better, but I think... I think I, I corrected a lot of the mistakes that I was making in the earlier games in this game right here, which was... Sort of poor unit control where I go for gimmicky things, like run in with the sand skimmers, get all the railguns, even though there's still LEVs and stuff shooting at me. Um, 
And also, it was nice to like change things up and then actually win. You know, it made me feel like I st I can really go for like macro builds, which normally I'm a little hesitant to use. So, so that was a good game. Uh, we'll move on to the fourth map from this series. I mean, it's obviously not like a tournament series, just just for fun. But still, you know, we play our hardest, and it's going to be on the shallows. And now coming into this one, I was like, okay, well, a macro opening worked for me last game. It's the shallows. This is like the macro map, you know what I mean? I might as well just go for like something ridiculously greedy and see if it pays off. So my plan here is to go for like refinery mode very first, like before sandscreen fabrication, second production cruiser as fast as I can go. Um, and just see if I can like, see if I can win. Because if I can hold on to that kind of an economic advantage, I probably will win the game. A game is going to be playing Con F this time. Uh, and I was a little bit worried about like a, a blast drone rush or something, but then I thought, no, that's a game. He's gonna he's gonna retire his base for now, almost certainly. And there you go. Um, and you can see how much it does for you now. It gives you, I think, it's probably like 225 and 52 when you retire the base for an early now, which is pretty significant. But you know me, I, I like to keep my base for an alive, so I'm not gonna salvage that. So first two salvagers go onto the CUs on this one, second two salvagers go onto the RUs there. Pretty standard stuff here. But my thought was maybe I can actually keep producing salvagers until I'm ready to make refinery mode. And you say I get fleet capacity 45 earlier. That's because while refinery mode is teching up, I want to be able to make the other production cruiser and I want to be able to make sand skimmers to protect myself. Um, so yeah, making two more salvagers right there. They're going to go onto the RUs long distance mining. And then I'm like, well, maybe I can actually, because this map is so um, like so small, the distance between these, I can actually do third base long distance mining and get even more value out of it. So I start making some salvagers to go over on this direction right here. Make no mistake, this is like insanely greedy. Like if it was, if I was playing against myself and I did that normal thing where the production cruiser comes up with salvagers, like, or with, yeah, make salvagers on your opponent's front line to beat him with uh, sand skimmers. It would not turn out well for me. <laughs> you know, this would be very, very bad. But that's not going to be the case. Um, there are sand skimmers being produced, but not that many of them. And I assume that A game is going for refinery mode as well. We can't see that, obviously, but that's what it looks like to me. I'm getting refinery mode right now. This guy's slacking off, not doing anything. It's typical. Um, you can see two more salvagers being produced. So I'm really going all out. This is going to be a fully um, saturated base. This is going to be fully saturated. This is fully saturated before I even start getting sand skimmer fabrication. You know what I mean? So I see with my scanner that sand skimmers are coming here. I think, okay, <laughs> I'm not really ready for this. Um, so what can I do about that? So I think, well, refinery mode is coming out soon. I can move my carrier down onto this side. Um, he can just kind of hold off the sand skimmers. Hopefully there's nothing bigger, like a soul ship's coming out. And my uh, production cruiser can be back here. This is what I really want anyway. I want my carrier to be a bit more active, involved into the game. Refiner mode is going to finish in about one second, as well as sand skimmer fabrication. So I'm going to start making sand skimmers with the production cruiser. These guys will have to be temporarily pulled off, but I don't think that's going to be an issue. Um, and power reserve one would also probably be advisable right here. And you'll notice actually by using the healing on my base runner, I allow my carrier to drive over it, which is sort of interesting. But yeah, that was that was used to stop the salvagers from being damaged by the uh, sand skimmers of my opponent. Power reserve one is about to finish, and certainly I will turn on the weapon systems right there. Whichever side the sand skimmers go to, I can mine on the other one, so I'm not really worried about taking economic losses here. And my second production crew is going to finish really soon. I'm feeling very good about this, you know, I think this is a promising start because I got away with it, you know, I, I wasn't really punished for this insanely greedy opening, and make no mistake, this was like very greedy, so. One sand skimmer looks like gonna get picked off, no he doesn't, A game, how do you do this? <laughs> Teach me your ways. <laughs> um, but yeah, with my carrier here and my production cruiser here, I am on three bases to my opponents too. I'm feeling good about that. He is making another production cruiser right about now, so that's kind of a small, um, like, short-lift advantage, but it is an advantage nonetheless. I'm going to start making railguns, um, because I'm assuming he's going to go for assault chips again, and see if I can take control of the map now. What are upgrades looking like? None for me, none for him. 
Sense Gamer Raiding coming out on my side, don't know what he's going for. This base runner heal was used here, but Agen could actually have jumped on top of it, because of course it heals your opponents too, so he would probably have benefited from that. And maybe he could have taken a good engagement there, but he would have been underneath the carrier, so I can understand why he didn't. I put down a scanner, he instantly starts shooting at it. It kind of felt bad. I sort of felt after I put the scanner down, like, well, what was the point of that? But, <laughs> but that's all right. And I thought to myself, well, I have enough to go for honor guard fabrication. Like, why not, right? Maybe I can do an honor guard cruiser rush here. So that's what I start researching right there. Rating is going to finish in about 10 seconds. He's now got the armor upgrade, so his sand skimmers are better, but mine are faster. It's always an interesting dynamic, and he's just now gotten onto three bases himself. With another production cruiser finished here, that's going to allow him to get onto four bases if he wants to, or involve his carrier into the game a bit earlier. And if I remember correctly, what he goes for is the carrier. He involves that into the game faster, um, rather than going for four bases, but... That's an option that you have on this map, which is pretty unique, is to go for like four base economy. I think that's what I'm trying to do with this production cruiser, but I'm not sure. Anyhow, Sense Gamer Armor coming out for me right now. Um, we still don't know about the upgrades for him. I also don't know what he's teching to, because he still has only made uh, Sand Skimmers here, but... You can see I have some pretty, pretty abysmal focus firing going on right here. I don't really know why. I just kind of wasn't paying attention to that. Okay, I thought I was going to leave that Sand Skimmer alive with like two health, but I do leave this one alive with like about a sixth of his health left, so that's, that's a little sad, but... But yeah, he's got armor two now, just as I'm getting armor two as well. But this fight, I think, is one that I can take. You can see his carrier is firing cruise missiles at the uh, base runner, which I think is really smart. But seeing his carrier here, I immediately was worried about what he could do to my Sand Skimmers. Well, those cruise missiles, of course, very difficult to land them, but if you can kind of predict what your opponent is going to do in a sand skimmer fight like this, you can you can do big things, you know what I mean? And also, of course, I was worried about that cruise missile and its ability to take out my carrier. I was not interested in that at all. And so my movement over here, I think, was to try and get my carrier into a bit more of a defensible position, honestly, but also one that would stop sand skimmers from backstabbing over on that side. Um, I start making heavy railguns because I, you know, he's got a carrier right here, I need to have something to deal with this. If I can't push his carrier out, this could really get pretty sour for me, so. But this is what I was talking about. Now it's very predictable what my sand skimmers are going to do. Um, so I try to shake it up a little bit by moving back and forth, but I'm still really worried about a, uh, a cruise missile. And that is a good one. So suddenly lots of sand skimmers are going down there. Um, that was an excellent shot by A-game, and I kind of knew it was coming, but I didn't really know what I could do to stop it. So, I was a little worried at that point. I was like, oh no, this is, this is not going well. I need to reproduce all my sand screens real quickly. Uh, see what I can see what I can do to, you know, re retain that advantage there. The interceptors I'm not really too worried about, because they can't hit anything in this zone right here, because of the production cruisers. Although, interceptors are a bit more resilient to production cruisers in the patch, but not very much. <clears throat> and he can just continue putting down damage onto the carrier, of course. But I have an Honor Guard Cruiser about to finish, actually, which you really are not expecting at this stage of the game. Like, I almost guarantee he was not seeing this one coming. So I thought maybe I can get something funny done with this here. I'm also going to get Missile Ship Fabrication. Um, obviously, when there are this many Sand Skimmers on the field, that barrage can do a lot of damage. And, you know, if he's got Interceptors, if I ever plan on pushing out, I'm going to need to have this eventually. His choice is going to be a Siege Cruiser, and I also wasn't expecting this so early. Um, I hadn't seen, you know, I hadn't seen an Assault Ship yet, so I mean, it was really not expected. I think, I think we surprised each other with our Cruiser choices right here. This is definitely not like a very standard game, but I do have Railguns, I have an Honor Guard Cruiser, I should be able to deal with this. This is not really, this is not such a problem. And A-Game has seen the Honor Guard Cruiser now, who knows what he's thinking about that, but he knows it's there. Honor Guard Cruisers can get anti-air, but there's no way I have it yet. Um, <clears throat> now he's going to fire a barrage onto these uh, salvagers right here. The kind of uh, missile barrage actually was reduced, I think, in number of missiles, or at least it's planned to be. I'm not sure if that's been implemented yet. Um, but it should be noted that it's definitely the weakest of the barrages, but it actually lasts the longest, which is interesting. But. Kind of like the Soban microwave emitter, like, 
versus the cruise missile, would you rather have a barrage that lasts longer or just kill the salvagers outright? I mean, one's obviously better, right? So. Numbers of units are starting to stack up here. The tension is rising. I usually like to simplify the board a little bit. I like to um, not have so many things to worry about. So I'm looking for a trade here, but I obviously don't want to just lose all my units. That would be pretty silly. The other problem is that I'm fleet capped. I'm always fleet capped. I don't know why. <laughs> it's like the biggest thing I need to work on in this game. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, this ball of sand skimmer is looking really deadly, but so is mine, and I have more upgrades than he does. So I think. I think I have the advantage in any fight that involves them. We always need to be careful about bunching up though, you know, some really nasty things could happen here. Like this, for example. The missile ship is going to get a really nice barrage here, and then the honor guard cruiser takes a shot. And look how many sand skimmers went down there. I don't know exactly how many it was, but... Like, man. <laughs> um, just insane damage done right there. And I think he knows that he's kind of in trouble now. He's going to try to do um, an attack with these siege cruisers, because... He's clearly lost the field in terms of strike craft, so he needs to do something really quickly over here, but this number of heavy railguns is going to be able to easily hold off against that. One siege cruiser goes down, the second is probably going to follow it. Nice cruise missile takes out a railgun there, but it's not going to be enough. And I have free reign to do whatever I want with these sand skimmers right here. I paused for a second on this base runner, but I think, yeah, he smoked up. He's like 98% chance he's making a blast run here, so I'll just go for the eco instead. So he's running back over here onto his main. Um, Sand Skimmer damage 2 going to come up for me right now. Um, and I'm really ready to charge in here. I, I'm taking way too much time, as you can see. And I'm going to let this Blast Drone get in, which is pretty sloppy. <laughs> I mean, I just killed all of the Sand Skimmers. Like, if I don't win the game right now, it's basically like, it's a joke, right? Well, unfortunately, that's what's going to happen here. <laughs> But, you know, you get to see this uh, play out here. Another Blast Drone comes out, but it doesn't get any damage done here. Really, I should have already been in his main. I should have already been doing this damage here. But I'm getting there now, so it's better late than never. Uh, his carrier is at about half health, and I was hoping that I would be able to capitalize on this, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to. Um, but I've learned my lesson from previous games here, which is go for the unit that's damaging you first before you take out the economy. That'll, that'll greatly increase the amount of damage that you're able to do. So now this production cruiser could even fall, but at, at the very least, many salvagers are going to. One siege cruiser has been produced by Agin that's going to come over here, and that's excellent. Um, my move back here is very fateful. This is not good. I, I might have been able to see this coming, but honestly, I, I just thought it was good play by Agin here because... The siege cruiser right here is going to stop my guys from getting out. Like, they can't leave now, really. They're kind of, like, trapped in there, just sort of waiting for their demise. I was able to rush in and kill a railgun, though, so I felt, I felt good about this. I still think this attack has definitely been good, but could have been better. And honestly, at this point, I could make another production cruiser and get on four bases, too, because I have complete field control. This base here is a little hard to hold, but that doesn't matter if, you know, if, if you don't have any sand skimmers from your opponent on the field anymore. The Siege Cruiser from A-Game moves up here, which is actually quite a mistake. It allows all of these Sand Skimmers to get out. And they're going to kill off these Railguns here, and then they're just going to run away, probably. Um, it's really a miracle that these guys made it out of there, you know what I mean? But yeah. Really, at this point, I should, I should be pushing in. I should be more proactive. This is a game that I've won. Um, but, you know, you can always still lose. <laughs> That, that's, that's one reason why I keep playing even when I feel I'm behind. There's, you know, what do I say? There's no telling when your opponent could make a mistake and kind of lose the game for himself, you know what I mean? These railguns getting really good damage out, but there's a bunch of cruise missiles now, a bunch of um, kind of missile barrages coming down on them. They're going to have to run away. But my opponent's carrier is so damaged that that's not really, that's a non-entity for a little bit of time at least. I still think I should have gone for four bases, but that's all right. Um... But yeah, like, I backed away with these railguns, but after the barrage went down, there's no more barrage. I should push back in again. Uh, but I, I do not do this thing. And I come to really regret it. I sort of give A-game a chance to get back into the game here. Whoa! Ouch! Look at that shot. Hey, I don't have any railgun armor, so that was... painful. 
Well done. I'm not sure if he saw that with... He probably saw it with the siege cruisers, but... That might have just been a blind fire, honestly. I don't know. Raj is coming down on top of the railguns there, so I'm just gonna back away. But the barrage is still very good. You saw it. It got quite a lot of units there. I think three railguns went down to that one. Um... You know, it's clear that the longer I wait, the more difficult things get, but I still have the artifact advantage, and though he's got one picked up here, I don't think there's any way he's ever going to be able to extract, so I was feeling okay. I mean, I think at this point, if I had been more proactive with those sand skimmers that got through, if I had pushed in harder with my railguns, I could actually already have the game in the bag right now, but I'm still in definitely a winning position, just slightly less dominant, but still dominant. I got an honor guard cruiser on both sides here. Sand skimmer counterplay for my opponent is basically impossible. I've got a very healthy flock of railguns. I've got the anti-air I need. I've got sand skimmers. I've got everything, you know, and carrier power is coming in too now. Powers are five, about to be finished. I'm at maximum fleet capacity, you know, what I mean? like things are things are looking very good. Well, that could have been really that could have been really bad for him if the honor guard cruiser had gotten a shot in there. And you can see, by the way, this guy getting those railguns gave him a lot of veterancy already, so it's, it's pretty pretty cool. Gives him extra range, which is actually pretty good, but it's not very much extra range. Still, though, every bit counts, right? Another uh, barrage from these siege cruisers comes in. I think two is the magic number, as we can see, because it gets the railguns down to very low health. And though that's not enough to kill them, um, the cruise missile follow-up is really very good for May games. And you can see he's doing a lot of damage there. He's got one assault ship here, sort of some counterplay, but I'm like not worried about it at all, honestly. I was like, yeah, what's that gonna do? I've got, I've got plenty enough to deal with this right here. But I think the, uh... Oh, what's going on over here? Oh, we got another run by of sand skimmers. But I think the, the lack of map control that I'm managing to get here is like, pretty evident by the fact that I have two base runners and they're doing nothing, just waiting for this artifact to respawn. I should be in complete control of the map here, but I'm not, you know, some, somehow it's just, it's not computed. I haven't quite put it together, you know what I mean? At this point a Gaussian Missile Barrage comes down for me, but wouldn't it have been better, like, on top of the railguns there? That really would have been the better choice. Um, but yeah, I'm a little bit more concerned about stopping this artifact here, which I'm gonna do. Got my Speed Racer power, uh, Speed Racer Carrier powered up here. So both of us traded all of our sand skimmers away. Um, that's not going to favor anyone really. We both have about equal economies right now. But yeah, I'm hoping to extract another artifact here. But another barrage from these uh, siege crews is going to come down. This one's not quite as good, although it does catch the stragglers as they're on their way. When it comes to a railgun war, a game is winning because I have not gotten my. Um, I've not gotten my armor upgrades, and so he actually takes this railgun war quite convincingly. Oh, and these sand skimmers, you're in the wrong place, my friends. Yeah, they they recognize this and they're gonna back away, but still, that was, that was not very good. However, another artifact extracted, and I'm still denying my opponent's extraction quite nicely. This time he has to use smoke. And this is really the power of the Galzian Carrier late game. It can be everywhere that you need it to be, like, so fast, you know what I mean? Well, this cheeky little guy firing one shot at those uh, the siege crews at a time. But this looks like a very nice bundling. Um, if only my missile barrage was available right now. I kind of wasted the last one, but that would have been cr uh, crippling right there. However, you know what does good against b uh, bunched units is an honor guard cruiser, and it is in the area. Lan. <laughs> That's how you say like a stupid boy in Turkish. Anyway. Honor Guards get a good shot off of the railguns right there. Is he going to get another one? He's barely not going to fire it. That's really unfortunate because I could have maybe have gotten some kills there. But knowing my opponent was here, I moved my carrier up there trying to get some field control. Didn't manage to get anything just then, but I can run back and stop this artifact extraction for sure. The sand skimmers are going to run in here, but this is not a good place for them. Um, so they're going to run away. There's just too many siege cruisers here, which normally are not a counter to sand skimmers, but... You know, Conf, that's how they are. And really, I think this game should illustrate to you just like how powerful the Conf Siege Cruiser is because it stops them from having really any vulnerability against Sand Skimmers. Um, a game is recognizing that he needs to get something done on the field, so he's beginning to make bombers here now. Uh, because if the timer is allowed to run out, and there's only 10 minutes left on it, I will win on artifacts. So I'm okay to just stay here, I'm fine with that. 
And if he makes a single mistake, I'll be able to get field control, get more artifacts out. I might even be able to win off of that. This one also is respawning. This one I always have control over. But you know, like the nature of the Kana Siege Cruiser makes them very good on this map. The way that they're able to control the center there. Another missile barrage comes down on the railguns. I'm going to run in all of my uh, sand skimmers right here. Of course, the missile system had been powered up for A game, so they're able to come in and do massive damage to these units right here. Eventually they will need to leave, but they were able to do a lot of damage to the sand skimmers, and so I'm still feeling very, very good about how this game is going at the moment. Oh, look at that though, the bomber chipping in as well as the uh, missiles from the Conf carrier. Does a lot of damage to those sand skimmers actually, but I'm pushing in on the other side now, taking out one kind of straggling railgun right there. And I think I, I definitely have enough to win the railgun war, like, I should really just commit to this, because I know I have enough for this. But I think this is the fateful moment. He's got two artifacts that are trying to extract, and I do want to stop it, but I don't need to. I can just push in on the side here, and he'll have to pull back. Um, but yeah, this, this is the fateful moment in this game. Does it look like this carrier is able to withstand, you know, like this force right here? I really don't think so. <laughs> so moving it in there was a huge blunder, and now I'm not going to be able to get out in time. Even though, you know, here comes Speed Racer, it's not going to be enough. Uh, and the carrier is definitely going to fall. And that, unfortunately, will be game four. Isn't that kind of depressing? I clearly had a chance to beat A-game angst here, but yeah, I did not really take advantage of it. So let this be a lesson, though. I can definitely learn from this, and I think all of you can, too. If you get something grody and nasty like my kill of all of those sand skimmers over here, you got to capitalize immediately. If I'd run in right then, run into the back lines, just, I could have killed this production cruiser, run over, killed this one, run over, probably done damage to this one before like A-game's force could even respond. Uh, but instead, I just kind of wasted so much time actually literally standing still at some times, targeting the wrong types of units, you know. Um, and then on top of that, there were so many times where I had easily the railgun majority, but I didn't push in. And if I had, I would have been able to take the game in that way as well. So definitely my game to lose right there. Um, but well played by A-game Inks, you know what I mean? Like, he just, he doesn't make mistakes. Even when he's behind, that's like how he can get ahead, because he just doesn't make mistakes. He's so careful. Um... In case anyone is worried about the fact that like A game is basically the principal author of this mod, like he knows what he's doing. He's he's definitely the best player who's ever played this game, and uh, I wouldn't you know I wouldn't worry about his judgment. I think it's pretty sound. Anyhow, uh, that is all for today. I'll catch you guys later. Um, the artifact cup number five starts tomorrow, which I'm really excited about, um, and I will be casting the replays from that, of course. But in the meantime, if you have any replays to send to me, go ahead and send them. I love casting those. And I'll catch you later with another video from the dunes or the grasslands, I guess, but you know, whatever. This is a special map.